Good afternoon. Dale with Northridge Homes here again. Today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, your utility closet and, uh, and all the utilities that come into your house and where they come in and why. <clears throat> in prior videos I talked a little bit about how we, there is some control by the utility company, uh, whether that be a Vista or PG&E or whoever it is in your area, um, of where the gas and the power can come across your site, where your meters will be outside, etc. Then that, then that directly relates to how things are set up inside. So, for example, on this home, uh, behind me here is the electrical panel on this uh, exterior garage wall. Uh, that's placed there for two reasons. One, that's a combination of uh, what Avista, who is the utility provider for electricity on this project, would allow us to do. We had to put a pedestal halfway across the site and then come into a certain location so far off of the exit door to put the electrical panel. Uh, and then on the interior thought process of that, it puts your electric, electrical panel in the garage where if you did ever have to cut into the wall and, and add something or do some major change to electrical, it's in your garage wall, which is much easier to repair than a textured wall in your home. So, so we try to put it in a good location for everybody and the easiest accessible for the future. <clears throat> then on top of that, you have all your uh, heating and cooling system and water heater and etc. And, uh, and today, with most of the open concept floor plans that everybody's going to and building, there's not a place inside your home for that. And we've gone away from putting the water heater inside your closet in your home somewhere, because as they get old, they leak, and it's just issues that you don't want to have in your home. So uh, at Northridge Homes, we adjust all of our designs, and most of our designs have a utility closet in the garage for a couple reasons. One, if there's an issue or you have the guy coming to work on your furnace, um, easy for him to get to. Comes into the garage, you open the door, he gets to the furnace. Uh, two, if there's a leak, whether it be a condensate leak from your furnace or a leak from water from your water heater because it went bad for some reason, then again, they're out here in the garage and not in your home. Now, with that, you'll also see that there's a pair of doors on top of this utility closet and it's about 18 inches off the floor. In most places, if you're using gas appliances, which this home has both a gas furnace and a gas water heater, they have to be elevated 18 inches off the floor for a fire safety issue. So not only is this garage completely fire rated to separate it from the house, on top of that, the, the utilities are raised 18 inches off the floor so that if you have some gas leak or an open container of fuel inside of here, gas can, etc. Um, or your kid's working on the motorcycle and spills gas on the floor, those fumes are going to want to stay down towards the floor and the ignition source of your utilities are above that and don't cause a flash fire. So now with that said, talking back about the drain system, we're not completely cleaned out and ready. We're a couple weeks from turning this house over and giving it a full final clean. But, uh, uh, but the drain system here has two ways to drain. So in the back, there is a, a black drain pipe that everything, the overflow for the water heater and the condensate for the um, uh, heating system, both go into that drain and that dumps right into the sewer system. On top of that, there's a backup, which is a metal pan that all of this equipment is sitting on top of. It has an overflow drain that goes onto the garage floor. So if one drain fails, there's a backup for it and, and all the water either ends up outside or on, the, on a concrete floor and not on a surface that's going to cost you money to repair. Uh, inside of that, this room itself is also fire rated against the house. So if there's some problem in there that does cause a fire, it's, it's going to take an hour for it to ever get into the house and it's going to set off alarms and, and you have adequate time to get away from your home in case hopefully that never happens, but that's the purpose behind it. So the last item is this bollard here. And the bollard is so that it's impossible for you to run your car into the unit, break everything down, and have your car sitting on top of your water heater or your furnace or what have you. So <clears throat> the bollard's bolted completely through the floor, four inch steel pipe, and, uh, and your car is going to take a lot of damage before it goes to this bollard. Ultimately, there, it's there, though, uh, to protect you from ever damaging this utility closet and having a, a big issue. So in closing, uh, a, a good builder, and at Northridge Homes, that's what you get, is going to, to look at your utility closet and the, how the utilities are going to come into the site way back in the planning stage of the, of the project. 
Uh, and that's so that you end up in a position where everything's pre-planned out, um, you have good locations for your water heater and your furnace and your power and your gas, and it's not something that you're just sticking wherever it fits later on. It's, it's a really good thing to make sure you have planned out in the beginning so you get a quality finished product at the end.